Hello, folks. Um, in this uh, uh, sort of wrap-up lecture, I wanted to show you a few uh, models and uh, a couple of other features uh, that we can use when doing system dynamics modeling. Um, so this is a lecture 15 folder. I'm going to fire up a model that's called MiniWorld. And probably by the name, you can intuitively know um, what the model is going to be about. It's a, it's a simple model that uh, has a show some interactions uh, between uh, variables like population, uh, pollution, and, and production, uh, in this case, production capacity. Okay, so I'm going to walk you briefly. I, I want to focus less on the, um, on the structure of the model per se, but I want to show you a couple of things that are introduced in, in, in this model formulation. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the equation formulations for this model. If we look at the, let's look at the stocks first. Let's look at population, again, classical. Uh, births uh, minus deaths uh, with an initial population. Um, uh, so that's there. Uh, if you look at the initial population, it's one. Uh, so this is really uh, a little bit of a conceptual model. Uh, one could be a million, a billion, depending on where, you know, what, what scale you're simulating. Um, okay. Um, let's take a look at how the births are formulated. And um, here you can see that the birth um, the births are, are formulated uh, by multiplying a birth rate, okay, times the population. So at this point, this is the sort of formulations that we've seen before, you know, the first two terms here in this equation, okay. Now, in this model, um, the birth uh, the births are also um, sort of modulated by a few more, more variables, the quality of the environment, the consumption level, and, and birth control. So let's take a look at those three. If we look at birth control, it's essentially a, um, uh, it's a, it's a variable, it's a constant, it's got a value of one. Um, so this means there is birth control, or there is some, you know, some for, for, form of birth control. Um, you can, you know, you can have there, um, so it's just a multiplier right now. Um, you can have that there, something like a zero or something. Uh, so it's meant to be like a fraction that modulates that. Uh, if we look at quality of the environment, which is derived from the environmental stock. Um, it's also a constant, okay? Um, and uh, we'll see in a second what, what it depends on, but it's essentially a ratio of an external variable uh, damage threshold divided by the environmental pollution stock. So we're gonna look at that in a, in a second. And then the last uh, variable that appears is the consumption level. Um, and the consumption level, it's essentially uh, the uh, production capacity stock. So we're gonna look at that, okay? Um, the deaths in the population equation are, are driven by, um, again, you know, death rate times population. That's what we've seen before, but it's also mediated by environmental pollution. Okay, so environmental pollution has a uh, influence on deaths. So let's take a look at the environmental pollution stock. See what goes into that. Um, and if we do that, then you know we get degradation m minus regeneration. So pollution. Uh, gets uh, increased by degradation and decreased by regeneration. So there's a re regeneration term here. There's an initial pollution value that's given, okay? And we can look at that initial pollution value. In this case, is one, okay? Again, conceptual. Um, and um, let's take a look at the uh, um, degradation term, okay? So with degradation term, uh, there's a rate of degradation that is associated with population and consumption, okay? And uh, so population feeds into the degradation. There's also a degradation rate, which is, we'll see it's a sort of a constant. So you see there, units of inverse year. And then there's this consumption level again, which is tied to the production capacity. So we'll get to that in a second. Let's look at the other side of the environmental pollution stock, the regeneration. Um, so this is basically one of these if-then-else statements. Um, so, uh, so this uh, the, the the regeneration term. It's um, if the quality of the environment is is, is good, um, then the re regeneration term um, is essentially a um, it's a it's a multiplier, it's a rate times the environmental pollution. Otherwise, um, it's uh, that environmental pollution gets replaced by a damage threshold. So this basically means that the regeneration rate 
is able to proceed, um, you know, nature or or the or the natural resource, the environmental resource, is able to regenerate um, at a um, at a normal rate until you hit that threshold. Um, and let's so let's take a look at that threshold because we've seen it before. So this threshold is just a um, it's an auxiliary variable that's constant, and it's got a value of one. Okay. Uh, so anything, and we'll see how when we compute it, we'll see what values does that take. But there's basically basically a threshold that modulates the regeneration term. Okay. Now let me refresh the memory about the quality of the environment. Quality of the environment is a parameter that is essentially this ratio. So this damage threshold divided by environmental pollution will dictate. Um, so that basically means uh, that you want to keep this ratio down if it if um, if, if this um, the ratio goes. Uh, um, I'm sorry. I want you want to keep this the quality this quality up um, by keeping the environmental pollution down. Um, so that's the the idea of that of that this parameter quality environment. All right. Let's take a look at the uh, third stock production capacity. Okay, production capacity. It's basically fed by an um, a flux in that's capacity increase, and there's an initial capacity it goes in. Um, this initial capacity again is one, so we're working pretty much in units. Uh, um, and um, the capacity increase, uh, there's a number of things that go into it. Uh, and uh, so the capacity increase is a growth rate in production times the consumption level times the environmental pollution. So you can see that pollution affects uh, the capacity increase, um, and then. Um, there is here an, an expression one minus consumption level times the environmental pollution divided by a consumption goal. So this, uh, you know, if, if you you if you remember this 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 type of formulation before, I'm going to highlight this one minus some you know something divided by something. This dictates that there is a you know carrying capacity uh, uh, built into the model formulation. In this case, the carrying capacity is this consumption goal. Parameter. So there is a consumption goal parameter, which in this case is it's a number, it's a ten, okay, and um, and that drives this capacity increase. There's a growth rate that goes into it. So this is the this is the uh, uh, the rate of growth of production, okay, um, and uh, and that might be tied to things like you know, technology improvements um, and, you know, uh, a market availability, other other factors like that. There's a consumption goal, um, which is the, the, the carrying capacity that we just mentioned. Then environmental pollution, um, you know, works itself into this. It affects uh, the capacity increase. Um, and that's, of course, the consumption level uh, here uh, that, goes, that goes into this capacity increase. So consumption... Um, uh, you know, it's going to drive uh, the capacity increase, and then that sort of drives the production capacity. Okay, so there's a um, there's a feedback here. Uh, so this is basically a very simple, uh, you know, three stock interacting um, conceptual. You know, these are not real parameters, but it's more just to show a little bit of the model structure. And if, of course, if if we run this uh, model, um, let's say yes, and then we'll um, we'll take a look at the. Uh, I think there's a graph pre-produced for this model, uh, mini world stocks. Um, so we're going to display that. And uh, I'm going to put it on this side uh, and uh, close this. I'm going to put it on this side and make it bigger. So let's take a look. Uh, so this has a three stocks. It's got population in blue. OK, we can see the population. And this is this model's run over 500 years. Uh, so the population essentially oscillates until it reaches equilibrium and you can see that actually all three variables reach some sort of equilibrium so there's there's a sustainability built into this and this is the sustainable value of population production capacity also oscillates and then stabilizes at this value um, and that value is um, you know if we look at the second scale um, it is um, let's see how has this oh here it is uh, it's uh, roughly 
this is two and a half, this is five, so that might be like three and a half. And then the, um, the environmental pollution also eventually stabilizes it to some value. Uh, here, that scale is um, it's about it's about three. Okay, um, so this is you know a very basic uh, uh, sustainability uh, model for a three stock um, a system. Okay, now the reason I wanted to show this model, we've seen you know models a little bit more detailed than this, and and uh, and actually with with perhaps some real data, but I wanted to show you. Um, you know, one of the things you can do with a model like this, it's uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of this model. Um, and I'll just save this version. That's fine. Um, it's um, it's something that's called developing or you know orienters or or indicators uh, for this model. So there's a second model in the folder uh, that's called oriented mini world. So I'm gonna open that and um, let me just uh, expand window and uh, it's essentially the same model uh, it's, I'm gonna call it I called it mini world with orientation so this part the, the top part of the model is exactly the same what's is different now is that here this model has a number of orienters uh, that are included and the idea um, and this is what the, what the reason I wanted to show you this model is that you can actually translate the simulation results of the model. You can translate, you know, these outputs into a series of indicators. So what you have here in, in, in the module on the bottom is on the left, you have all these shadow variables. You know, you've got regeneration, degradation, consumption level, quality of the environment, deaths, births, population, and increased capacity. All these uh, are shadow variables that are obtained by sim by simulating the top of the model, okay. So that's basically what we've already seen. Now you can use all these shadow variables to compute a series of auxiliary variables, okay. Um, you know, here we call them effectiveness one, effectiveness two. We're going to see what those are like. We have three variables that are related to some freedom, uh, two to security. You know. Two to uh, coexistence, actually two to existence, one to coexistence, and four to adaptability. Okay. Now the idea is that you know and, and we're going to look at these um, these variables, but this is where you this is the place where you can introduce um, you know if you know the values of, of a given system. So if if this is a um, you know a human system that involves population, you know, you can gauge you can gauge your uh, your population for a series of values um, that can be measured in quantitatively and then can be simulated quantitatively and so this gives you a a pretty powerful way of start mapping you know the outputs of, of the dy system dynamics model into a series of indicators that can then translate into uh, into measures of um, performance of the system uh, given these values, so let's let's just uh, walk you through um, through how these indicators can be assembled. So this effectiveness one, it's essentially essentially it's a ratio. It measures a ratio of regeneration versus degradation. So what this is measuring is how quickly is uh, the natural resource able to regenerate itself versus how quickly it's, it's degrading. Okay, and the uh, the effectiveness, uh, the effectiveness parameter that's here is given us as a graph. I'm going to show you the graph, and uh, and it's a you know it's a variable that goes between zero and one, okay, and uh, so it essentially maps. And, and then what you have on the left, of course, is that ratio of regeneration versus degradation, okay. So if your if your regeneration versus degradation is zero. You basically your effectiveness is zero, and your or your effectiveness one, and so on. Okay, if it's two, if you're regenerating twice as fast as you're degrading, then your effectiveness is is one or a hundred percent. So that's basically how it maps out, and so this allows you, and 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 the way you would build this curve, uh, and, and this is where um, you know this these 
the modeling turns out to be more an art than, than the math is that you have to map uh, these values you know you, you do you do social surveys you know you you, you, you look for social data um, uh, and uh, and you integrate that into into a simple you know a simple tabular formulation like this okay um, and we can look at um, the second effectiveness here and uh, if we do that this uh, relates is a ratio again it relates the quality of the environment to the consumption level so this is measuring how how we preserve the quality versus how uh, we you know we uh, change the consumption level and again it's a little table and you can graph it you can show it as a graph and again you can show this pattern and it's the same deal okay um, you know sort of the same concept um, now if you take these two effectiveness parameters you can combine them into a an effectiveness sort of macro indicator or this orienter and let's take a look at what that what how that look how that see you know it's uh, how is that structured so the way this effectiveness um, orienter is computed uh, the idea is that if if your product of the two parameters of effectiveness the ones that's related to re the regeneration the, the others related to the quality of the environment versus consumption if you multiply those two and you get a and you get a positive okay then it's just the average okay if one of these guys is negative so this that this product is negative then your effectiveness is zero so what this measures essentially is um, is that it's sort of a combined effectiveness and um, so that's how this is translated here let's take a look at the freedom I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna look at, at, at the at all the parameters but I'll look at a few let's look at freedom it has three so this freedom one indicator has to do with the consumption level so this is freedom to consume okay um, and um, so if you if you graph it you know um, here you have your consumption level and here's your freedom parameter again between zero and one so all these indicators it's better to keep them within a numbers that are easy to translate zero to hundred percent zero to one so you can actually um, you know map them and uh, so that's essentially the freedom one parameter the freedom two parameter is related to the quality of the environment so you you have freedom to consume now you have freedom to have a good quality of the environment and you graph that and you will see a similar similar you know plot okay very easy and this is very nice to do because it's sort of a it's a good map in your head of how the system is performing freedom three is tied to uh, the ratio of deaths to the total population okay um, so this is more of a of, of how uh, you know how population is keeping up with itself so see this ratio has a sort of an inverted scheme because here, as as the deaths go up, that freedom parameter goes down. Okay, and these deaths can be um, natural. It could be a combination. It could be um, uh, it could be tied to safety issues, depending on, on where you are. Um, so then, if you combine freedoms one, two, and three uh, in a very similar fashion, if the product of the three is positive. Uh, then it's the average. If not, if any of them is negative, then it's zero. Okay. Um, so that's the um, that's the um, you know the key here. Okay. So let's see. Let's see security. Okay, security has got two. So this security um, it's also tied to regeneration versus degradation. So this is. Um, like you know, environmental security. Okay, and um, probably won't graph all of these because you can actually intuitively know how they look like. Uh, and then the second security has to do with deaths divided by birth. So this is how quickly population is dying versus how much is getting rebuilt or regenerated. Um, and uh, you can again see this is going to be a see. Look at this indicator. This is interesting because. Um, you know, if you are on the on the low side, 
you have zero security. If you're on the high side, also you have zero security. So it means that you have you have a sweet spot here of security. And this basically what this means is that if if you know if your deaths are too low to comp compare to your birth, your population is going to start growing too fast, and you're, you're not going to achieve sustainability. If uh, if you if you achieve if you if you're too high, then you're you're decaying. So so you hit a sweet spot for sustainability. Okay. Uh, so those are the security. Um, we be curious here. What's this coexistence? Um, coexistence has to do with the quality of the environment. Okay. Um, and you can imagine that these. Uh, you can see the, the 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 same structure here. You can imagine that some of these indicators are, you know, you you survey population. They tell you this is what is what's important to them. You know, so you sort of build them from there. Adaptability. I'm curious as to what that is. This, this adaptability, for example, four, is related to the consumption level. So let me see what that is. It is the consumption level indeed, and uh, this adaptability parameter. Um, it's also between zero and one, and uh, it's got you know up to four. You sort of reach. You sort of tap out at one. So what happens then is that you can you can um, compute all these orienters. Um, and there's actually at the end an orientor satisfaction total, which is, let's take a look at that equation. It is basically the average of the six basic orienters. Okay, so this is like an overall measure of performance. Uh, so let's take take a run of this. And um, well, there's a bunch of warnings here, and pro it's probably on these on these tables on adaptability. Uh, so those can probably be fixed. They're just warnings, so it's not like the model's not running. Um, and uh, let's take a look at there's a I think there, there's a there's a um, summary of indicators. Uh, let's take a look at that. This is actually a table, okay? Um, you can see this model was created by German researchers. There's a little bit of German here, but this is uh, if you go in time from zero to five hundred uh, years. Um, you can see the, the different um, the different orientors, it's, you know, the existence, the effectiveness, freedom. So you can see that freedom here is not very good. Effectiveness sort of stabilizes. Existence sort of stays the same. Adaptability is pretty much zero. Coexistence stabilizes. So does the total orientor uh, satisfaction. So this is just a tabular form to produce. But you can actually see the graphs. Let's take a look at the graph, the first graph um, here. This in the indicator set one, and this has the adaptability, coexistence, and effectiveness. Uh, you can see that you know a couple of these these guys stabilize. Um, so the uh, the effectiveness and coexistence stabilize. The adaptability stable stabilizes about at zero. Okay, um, we can actually graph number two here. And uh, let's look at this one. You have existence in blue, which is 100% all the time. You have freedom in red, which so so this basically it's 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 an interesting way of looking because you know if you if you look at this combination of parameters, let me close this. If you look at this combination of parameters, it it would appear that you know um, you know some uh, some of these orienters are not being satisfied at all. You know, so freedom. Is not, and certainly adaptability is not. Um, and um, you know, if we look at security, security stabilizes after some time, but it will go through some rough spots. Uh, same here with effectiveness. Um, and um, so, so, so these indicators are good to try to map out how this society or this system evolves towards this um, steady state or this sustainable state. But it'll go, you know, go through some turbulent times. So you can actually uh, sort of visualize what that can do, and then what you can, what you, what, what you can do with this in practice is that you can, um, you can use these graphs to illustrate the need to change some of these parameters, some of these policies, or some of these targets. You know, some of this damage threshold, some of these consumption goals, and 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 try to work and, and try to use these indicators here to. Uh, to translate those results and, and to make changes and go back. 
The nice thing, is, as I've been saying, is that um, you know this model can be run in real time very quickly. You can show results uh, to a group of people, stakeholders, a, uh, a board of directors, or you know a uh, 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 an executive cabinet of ministers or Congress people. So it's it's very it's a very nice tool to to sort of generate those results. Uh, just out of curiosity, I wanted to see how this Orienter satisfaction total looks like. And so I'm going to graph that. And so the overall satisfaction is, is this graph here. Okay. So you can see that you know if if if, if 100% is the goal, then you sort of stabilize the system at about 40, 40 plus. Um, and but you do go through through some highs and lows. And so that's sort of also interesting to see. Now this is a very aggregated version of these six guys, so you have to look at that as well. So I want to show um, this model basically to show the to to uh, demonstrate the the potential uh, value of doing these indicators because really in in particularly in in you know in development you do a lot of these um, you know you you do a lot of this quantitative indicator. Um, measurements and you, you get this development data and, and so these are uh, quantitative measures that allow you to tweak decisions and to strategize so that's that's how how I see this tool working okay so um, I'm gonna get out of this and uh, show you the last model that I wanted to to uh, demonstrate in this lecture I'll say yes and get out of this so you'll get you know, you'll get those numbers. Um, the next model I have is the World 3. If you recall, in one of our first lectures, we talked about the limits to growth um, uh, literature uh, and uh, we talked about uh, the, uh, the World 3 model. Now, I just want to show you this model so you have it and you, you're able to take a look at it. It's a, it's a sort of a piece of historical um, efforts in, um, in system dynamics modeling and uh, so this was a, um, a reconstructed version of the World 3 model and um, I'll show you the, the model briefly uh, and um, we'll basically run it and just look at some results and, and it's a this is a it, it was a very bold attempt at it in, in its time and um, and here, uh, what's nice about this this recreation in Benson is that they they basically summarized uh, the people that did this um, uh, recreation of the model uh, summarized uh, you know uh, the you know some some of the key parameters uh, that are time related okay um, things like you know policy implementation time and these are parameters that appear in the model that we'll look in a second there's some policy type parameters. Um, and uh, initial natural resources, desired food ratio, improvement of rate of technology, pollution technology, improvement rate of land yield technology. So these are able, these are meant to introduce uh, improvements in uh, technological improvements in, in in pollution control and food production. And then the the actual result variables. They have 11, 11 um, outputs here. Now, uh, this model is is you know it's pretty complex. Um, you know, or, or simple and complex at the same time. Simple because it's implemented in a very simple platform. But if you look at the, start try to look at it's got a a, a huge number of models uh, or modules. Here's a population module. I want to show you that one first. You can see the population here is broken into cohorts: zero to 14, 15 to 44, 44, 45 to 64, and then 65 plus. And uh, with some, and we've seen so sort of this cohort interaction before. I am not going to, of course, I, you know, it would take me, you know, probably hours just to go through the entire model. But I, I, I wanted to show you what it looks like. It's got, you know, four substocks, um, and it's got a series of parameters. I want to, I want to move down the list. Um, you know, so population is one module. Then there's a module in life expectancy which feeds into the population. But then, you know, and, and, and life expectancy is one of these modules that doesn't have any stocks. It's just basically a computation of parameters that then feed into the population module. Okay? Uh, so life expectancy goes here. Um, 
let's look keep going down fertility which is also a population related um, population related module okay again no stocks um, just you know some interactions of different variables that produce fertility information that goes into the population module we keep going down so that module is pretty big there's a module on jobs okay and this is also one of those modules that doesn't have um, stocks, but this will feed into one of the other modules that we'll see in a second, okay? Um, so I'm going to move up and to the right so I can show you the remainder of the modules. So there's a persistent pollution module here. The persistent pollution module does have a stock. It's called persistent pollution technology, okay? And um, you can see some of the interactions. And I probably what I what I what I ask you to do, and this is a fun model to look at in detail. is just to kind of navigate through the model, see how it's built. It's uh, you know you can think of each of these modules involved a series of specialists in, in the in the topic. So the persistent pollution involved a series of environmental experts or environmental specialists that built this model. A lot of interactions with uh, with stakeholders and the public uh, to try to come up with uh, something that made sense. And there's a second stock here, which is the actual the persistent pollution stock. And we'll see the results in a second. Um, uh, the next module is uh, non-renewable resources. This is a resource module, and it's got two stocks, as we can see here. I'm trying to scale this so we can show it non renewable resources and the resource conservation technology uh, so that's got two stocks there one relates to the resources themselves and the other to the technology that's used uh, to conserve or you know or or improve uh, the availability the availability of the resources then we have the industrial pollute production uh, stock okay which has module sorry which has the industrial capital stock. Again, with a series of interactions. So this, the group of people that was used to assemble this module is different than the group of people that was used to assemble the population, which that's probably more demographers, or the environmental uh, pollution uh, module. So you can see how, how system dynamics can become a very interesting way to aggregate all these different interactions. Services. So this is where... Um, this is also one of these um, modules that has, uh, so this is, has, to, has to do more with the economy and uh, with uh, service production. And, um, and so you can see, you can probably see some of the jobs uh, module stocks here as well, or the, the jobs module variables here. So I need, again, I'm going to actually go now from the bottom up. Then we have a, this is a, an agricultural module. So this has a, um, a measuring the productivity in agriculture. It's got a, a land yield technology as, as the key stock, okay, with all the variables that go into that. Uh, let's see, let's move up. The next module up is food production, okay. So, so here, this one has no stock, but it is linked to the productivity and agricultural module, the food production stock. And then here you have a land fertility um, module, which involves uh, you know, the, some of the variables that have to do with agricultural productivity. You can see everywhere you see shadow variables, those are variables that are coming from another module. So you can see how all these modules, of course, interact with each other. And then here we have a the land development, land loss module. Uh, so you can see the arable land, um, um, and then the urban land, and, and the actual um, availability of arable land. And you can see all these different shadow variables that link these to food production, to population, to services. So, so you can you can imagine, you know, just the sheer complexity of a model like this um, and uh, so it's, it's fairly daunting uh, to 
to try to understand every single piece of this. But I encourage you to take a look at it um, and uh, to explore and navigate through. Uh, again, this was a classical model uh, that was developed in the 70s, and I think there is a, some reference here uh, to... Um, so there's a little bit of a reference here to the limits to growth model, the 30-year update. So this was built, actually I should correct myself, this, this was built based on not the original 72, 74 uh, model, but actually the three-year update that came out in 2004, okay? Um, and you actually look up that reference, and, uh, and there's a, oh, here's another module that I had escaped me, which is the welfare index and the ecological footprint, which has you know, which ha which has uh, um, uh, some uh, parameters associated with them, and also some shadow variables that link this module to others. So what I want to do is basically, I mean, one of the things that is interesting about this is that it's got it's got all these modules, but you can actually run it very quickly. Um, and um, so there's some lookup bounds here, but these are all warnings, and um, there are some. Um, graphs that are produced here. Well, there's three graphs, so we'll take a look at the three. For the first one is called State of the World. And uh, I'm going to make, I'm going to plot these graphs and we'll look at them and then I'm going I'm to make them big. So, so this model is run for 200 years, 1900 to 2100. Um, population is the blue stock, so uh, population is given in people. Scale is zero. To 12 billion, so you can see that this comes to growth model predicts sort of population peaking at probably somewhere around seven and a half in 2025, and then sort of decreasing. So this this particular combination of parameters, um, you have non-renewable resources dropping down over over time, uh, and the scale is in resource units. The industrial output. Um, also, sort of following population a little bit, going up and then coming down. Food uh, production in gray, going up and coming down. Um, and you can see some of these variables are are, are somewhat in, in you know synchronized. Um, and and then the the pollution as well, um, sort of being kept in check for a long time, but certainly peaking and then going down. Okay, so this is sort of the uh, state of the world. You know five key indicators um, showing. Let me take a look at the standard of living uh, graphs. I'm going to make this bigger. And here it looks at few indicators: uh, food per capita in, in blue, okay, consumer goods produced per capita, um, the services per capita produced. In the life expectancy, okay. The life expectancy is the um, um, is the um, um, is the um, it's the bottom scale. So life expectancy goes up to you know um, you know almost what is this? This is like eighty plus, and it comes comes down because of all these variables combining um, with under this combination of parameters, which is fairly complex, okay. And let's look at the welfare and footprint. Uh, so these are just those two last indicators. So the human welfare index and the human ecological footprint, um, you know, dimensionless, going up and down, um, uh, sort of peaking at, you know, at some values and then going down depending on the scale. Okay. So I just wanted to show this because it has, uh, you know, a little bit of a historical value. Uh, you can read up on, on the whole limits to growth effort and the updates. I, I, I would highly encourage you to look at the um, at the update that came out in 04. And there's, a, there's probably an update, the 40-year update is going to come out uh, either this year or next year, probably. I know it's being worked on to look at how, you know, how this model uh, or, or how this, uh, because this is not the original model, this is a sort of a, a model that has evolved, but how the current version of these models are, are doing and, but I thought it'd be nice to show. So I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you are able to to navigate, um, you know, these models and uh, to you know learn from it. And, um, and this will be the basic, basically the um, 
the way we started the class uh, with limits to growth, the discussion, and the way I want to close the class as well is to you know point to these type of models and their potential value to help us think about all these complex issues and how they interact. It's very difficult without a tool like system dynamics to really integrate these variables and see how they interact and try to extract some information as to the potential scenarios that might occur and that might generate given um, a certain combination of policies and um, and uh, and uh, and scenarios. So I um, hope you enjoy this and uh, I'll close the video here. Thanks very much.